This week's guest is an amazing mentor of mine. She has grown multiple pages, over half a million followers each. She talks about how to nail your niche and what the importance of your name is to your branding. So tune in this week as we hear from my mentor, Miss Rachel Miller. Hey, my friend, it's Melanie Ferguson, your host of Creatives on Fire, the podcast where I hope to inspire you to create a profitable six-figure following online. So turn it up and listen in to amazing stories of success, along with behind-the-scenes secrets and valuable tips from, you guessed it, Creatives on Fire. All right, all right. We have another Craftathon coming up right around the corner. If you are not familiar with the Craftathon, it is an amazing 48 hour adventure for your online business. So it is where we gather 54 expert crafters to present projects online to the public. This is hands down one of the fastest ways to grow your audience to a six figure following. And you do not want to miss out on the next one. It is going to be Saturday and Sunday, June 5th through 6th, 2021. I encourage you to check out all things Craftathon at craftathonpresenter.com. And I'm excited to see what this does for your business. Join us on the inside. I'll see you there. Hey, y'all. It's Melanie Ferguson back. And I wanted to introduce you guys to an amazing, amazing mentor of mine, Miss Rachel Miller. She is an expert at all things Facebook, but one of her amazing things and gifts is building audiences. And it all starts with a business and naming that business. And so I thought I would bring Rachel on because she's known for a little something called, well, I'll let her tell you what it's called and um, take it away. Oh, thank you, Melanie. I appreciate it. I love thinking about what our audience most wants the world to know about themselves. Because when we call our our business something like Purple Hippo, no one necessarily knows what that's about. Is it about hippos? Is it about stuffed animals? Is this a, what is this place? And so um, Purple Hippo is actually a cupcake store. But people, when they're searching in Google, when they're searching their local town, when they drive by, when they see Purple Hippo with a big swirly purple, and like a, a like crown type of logo, they don't understand that this is a cupcake store. And um, even if they saw the word purple hippo with a cupcake with a candle in it, they would think that that's a birthday place. Not that it's a place where you can go and get custom gourmet cupcakes by the dozen. So um, thinking about the way our audience would consume our content as um, readers, as potential customers, we want to outline or use the words that they would say to describe us. So gourmet cupcakes by the dozen. Um, That would be the perfect cupcake. That would be the way that your audience would instantly understand what you're about. It's not cute. It's not kitschy, but it gets you more sales. Yes. And what is your famous tagline for that? I call it the bumper sticker because it's, you want to, convey something in a blink of an eye. And that's, um, it's something that Don Miller calls gruntable. Like what is something that they could say, uh, uh, it's, it's cupcakes <laughs> in a way that people could just grunt it out. And you would totally understand what it means. Because remember when our customers are driving by our stores, they're driving by and they've got a second to understand what they just passed. And we've got like seven times of them passing us for them to get used to us. So we need to make the most over those seven interactions before we invite them in to, you know, buy cupcakes. Or this is also online. This is not just, I gave a local business store, but this is also something that works online. When you have got a Facebook page, we've got an Instagram account, a LinkedIn page. It needs to be clear who you are and who your reader is from the banners, from your profile pictures, from your name. And so for me, I like to say name your business something similar to a bumper sticker, something that people can instantly understand. And like a bumper sticker, you don't always want it to be about you because then they're wearing your bumper stickers. So Sally's Cupcakes, would they wear the bumper sticker that says Sally's Cupcakes if they're not Sally? Not usually, right? Um, right. But they will be more likely to say um, only one more cupcake 
or um, cupcakes is dieting without the full cake. They would be willing to say those things about themselves. So your content needs to almost say those things that your reader would say instead of saying, hi, I'm Sally with my cupcakes. So Rachel, tell me when would be a good time to go ahead and add your own name to your name? Yeah, I want you to wait until you have an audience already. So your audience is thriving and engaged and active. I don't want you to do that until close to 100,000 fans if you've got an active niche. So I'm thinking of Rachel Harris. Um, Harris. She did not become Rachel Harris. She was party cheek because she was a party planning site before. And then she built enough of an audience and then she pivoted into Rachel Harris. Pioneer Woman, Reed Drummond. She did this as well. It was Pioneer Woman. You didn't see her face. You saw her recipes. And then she pivoted into Reed Drummond, the Pioneer Woman. Jennifer Allwood did this. She was a how to paint. And she did, here's your paintbrush. And then over 100,000 fans, then she pivoted into her name and her brand. So people don't attach themselves to a personal brand until there's people there. When it's just you saying, hi, it's Sa Sally, come follow Sally. They're like, we don't know who Sally is and you don't have anybody following you, Sally. So build an audience on whatever it is that you're passionate about and then slowly morph that audience to be a personal brand. You will grow faster. You will have a more loyal audience. And yeah, it, you, you just will grow faster when you grow, but grow it on something else that the audience attaches themselves to. And that is huge. That is huge because so many people, at least in our industry, the creative industry, start out with just their name or something that people don't recognize. And I think that you're obviously straight on. Tell us how, now, just so that they kind of know the source, how many pages have you done this with and what's your track record? I know it's um, amazing. I've grown one page to 2.2 million Facebook fans, grown another page to about 600,000 Facebook fans. Um, I've grown two other pages to over 200,000 fans. And I've grown, oh, probably a dozen pages to 15 to 30,000 Facebook fans. Wow. So you... And just to put this in perspective, my page on uh, Moolah Marketer, I'm starting to morph that into Rachel Miller. So you can see if you go to Moolah Marketer right now, you can see it's got my face on it. It's no longer just my brand. It's starting to have my face. Um, but I've made 1.9 million off that page so far. And it's a page with only 14,000 Facebook fans. And those 14,000 Facebook fans, if you look at my reach right now, I'm reaching 1.5 million people because all 14,000 people are highly engaged. So when you have enough of an audience that you're, you're able to get that snowball effect, that's when you can jeopardize that audience by putting your face onto it. So that's why I'm, I'm allowing some of my, you know, my goodwill, my juices with my audience, my fairy dust with the audience to decline as I'm increasing my face name on it. But that's because my page is regularly reaching 1.5 million people, even though it's a tiny page. Um, and that's why I feel confident enough that I could make the transition. That's so exciting. I know. Yes. Um, it is. It's, all buyers. it's lovely. That shows you the power that you don't need to have a big audience to make a big effect. Um, but you do need to have a passionate audience to kind of get that ball rolling. Right, right. So it is a number and a combination of the reach as well. Yes. So, so I want you to have a like minimum 10,000, honestly, 100,000 is best. And then a solid reach from that audience before you start putting your name on it. And guys, you are not stuck with your page name. If you like, oh, I'm gonna, I can't start my page yet. I don't know what I'm going to call it. Just start with something. I don't want to, I don't want to, what I'm going to start my business. What am I going to call my business? My technical business is called LRM because I didn't know what to call it. So I like filled out the, the legal docs. And I was like, Levi, Rachel Miller, my husband's name, my name, Miller, our last name. I didn't know what my business was going to be. So that's our incorporation. Don't sweat about it. The incorporation doesn't mind the fact that I'm using Moolah as my actual brand. Don't worry about the little stuff. Just get going. Right. Right. Action trumps all the fear. Yeah. So, well, amazing, amazing tips. I appreciate it. Tell me if there was anything that you feel like someone just starting out wanted to consider when they were naming their business that maybe you haven't mentioned yet. Is there okay. any? Yeah. Finding your niche. I'm um, finding because a lot of naming your business is that you don't know what you're going to do yet. So you could go the route that I did, which is just call it LRM products and see what comes of it. 
Or what you could do is go on to Google Trends and think of all the topics you're interested in. So make a giant list of all the things you could be interested in. I'm interested in jewelry. I'm interested in this. I'm interested in painting deck furniture. I'm interested in painting colors and like color palettes. So to write down all of those things that you're interested in and then go on to Google Trends and type them all into Google Trends and see, is this something people are searching for? Is this something that has a high search relevancy? Now, why is this why is this important? Because sometimes we might pick a business where there aren't any people buying anything on it. So you want to have people that are actively looking for this because then they're actively going to attach themselves to your brand. People are actively looking for cupcakes. People are not actively looking as much for, say, wood turning instruments that were used in the 1700s or whatever. I'm trying to think of something obscure. Right. Um, yeah. So Think of the term that you can then attach to. And I love to look at um, Google Trends. So you can see like Adkins is going down. Um, keto has gone up. So you're not going to name yourself something associated with Adkins. And instead, you're going to name yourself something associated with keto if you're in the diet space. Um, same with paleo has gone down. Keto has gone up. But hey, in three years, guys, it's going to change. And you know that keto page, they're going to change their name to fit the market too. So it, it all works. <laughs> so how do you avoid that? niching yourself down too small and then uh I just hit it. market changes yeah I think, I think people freak out about it too much so like I do tell people not to niche too tightly down where they're not able to sell so I'll give you an example my mom did this she um decided to sell statues with no faces on them for um people we grew up in the Mennonite and Amish community and there's Amish families that they don't do photos, so they don't have pictures of their faces. So she's like, well, how can I take a picture for them? Because the families do want to remember this stage of life, but without their faces. So she right. made these statues. Well, how many Amish people are looking for statues with no faces? Like, very few are looking. I mean, she did have families that took offer, took her up on her offer in parts of them, but it's not a trending niche, right? So for right. her, she needed to pivot into what else can I do to help these people that I've fallen in love with? And now she sells their quilts. So um, she's a quilt dealer where she helps them. Um, she has an online store where she'll help them get their quilts into people's their homes, into stores. So my point is she um, pivoted her, her brand. Guys, you can all pivot. When you pick the wrong thing, like the wrong thing, there, first off, there is no wrong thing. And two, it's a lesson. And three, like my mom right now is thrilled that she had per gotten the wrong thing because she built into the community that she loved. And next thing you know, she pivoted into what she was supposed to be selling. Does that make sense? She would have never gotten there if she didn't have that earlier struggle. So yes. Yeah, so, so my point is, if you don't know what your niche is that you're going to go into, you're not making any mistakes. Just take that first step and get it started. I'm so excited. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Well, thank you so much. And if anybody wanted to learn more about what it is that you are doing to grow these audiences, you, you do picking your perfect people and you're growing audiences by leaps and bounds. How would they go about, like, what is your course called and how, how do they reach you? My course is Moolah. Um, but before you get into Moolah, it's a Facebook course. It tells you everything from growing your audience and groups, attracting people. But before you get into that, I would love for you to join my free Facebook group, Facebook page strategies, and that will help you get you a, a beginning footing so you can begin your audience. And you'll get to talk to other pages that are growing in leaps and bounds. And it's just a lot of fun to, to not be alone in that struggle to get attention. Yes. And that is an amazing group. I'm part of it. And I, I think that there are so many people in there with so much knowledge that can help. Rachel's in there active all the time. So yeah. it's win-win. Oh, <laughs> and it's great. Really nice. It is. Yes. It's free. Yeah, totally free. Um, yeah. Appreciate Can't it. Be. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you so much, my friend, for listening to the podcast. I'm blessed every single time you come back and listen to an episode. It's especially amazing when you share it with others on social media. So be sure to follow Creatives on Fire online. Listen, if you have not already done so, I want you to go ahead and download the five ideas I personally used to explode my online audience growth to a six-figure following. You can find that at creativesonfirepodcast.com. I appreciate you. And until next time, stay inspired.